You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Options Oddities, the program where the experts at theoptionsinsider.com and the Options Insider Radio Network analyze all of the unusual activity that is lighting up the options markets. From smart money traders and corporate insiders to well-timed speculators, we'll track them all down on Options Oddities. And now, get ready to dive into the world of unusual options activity. It's time for Options Oddities. All right, everybody. Wow. Haven't heard that music in quite some time. Yes, it is the much-anticipated, long-awaited return of Options Oddities. If you're not familiar, listen, this was a program we did for quite a while. It was very popular. We used to do it. If you wanted it live, you had to get it exclusively over there at TD Ameritrade. We used to beam it in live there for all the people in their chat rooms and their swim lesson room, which was a lot of people back then. It was a fun show. Really enjoyed doing it. And, of course, all the crazy M&A that's gone on in the broker space. We ended up putting this on hiatus. But it's one that we've always wanted to bring back. And, of course, you folks have been asking us to bring it back. So we thought, what better time to do it than now when the audience, again, people are out there just wanting to talk about options so much these days. And also, it's a great new addition to the newest evolution of the Options Insider Radio Network, which is, of course, Options Insider Plus and Options Insider Pro. This is going out to everybody this week, so everyone kind of get a sense of what we're doing here. Going forward, this is going to be for the pro members every week. We're going to do it probably around this time towards the end of the sessions here on Friday. So no longer is Volatility View is the conclusion of our broadcast week. For the pro folks, they get an extra dose of options oddities here every week. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever evolving, like I said these days, Options Insider Radio Network. Glad to see so many of you have joined us and embarked on this crazy journey called Options Insider Plus and Options Insider Pro. The latter is for this program. I know a lot of you enjoyed the special QA we did earlier this week with the Oracle of New Hampshire himself, Mr. Matt Amberson from ORATS. That's also going to be part of the pro offering going forward. It's a lot of cool bells and whistles to come here. You're getting these shows. You're going to get a lot of other fun stuff coming. We're working on getting all of the cool uh, behind-the-scenes members-only live streaming platforms and servers up and running. So all that stuff's coming. Like I said, this is the launch window. This is the beginning. This is when it is at its most nascent. It's going to grow and get crazier from here. Trust me. So we want to thank all of you who jumped in at the beginning of this fun journey with us and a lot more again a lot more fun stuff to come and of course it wouldn't be options oddities if i wasn't joined on the program by the guy who used to host this show for us none other than the rock lobster himself mr andrew Giovanazzi. he was all set and scheduled to join me today unfortunately <laughs> mr rock lobster a little bit under the weather over there i guess like he that's what happens when he leaves maine he threw out his back <laughs> so not the mad slave driver People make me out to be. I wasn't going to force him to struggle through the pain on the show. So he'll be joining me next week, listeners. So a little bit of a extra fun, a little bit of extra incentive to join us over there on the pro side. So you get to be in on the fun when I re-team with the Rock Lobster here for all things options oddities. But let's kick it off. Like I mentioned, this was a fun one. We were kind of breaking down the trades of the day in the original incarnation 
of options oddities. Going to broaden that perspective, broaden that purview here, because there's a whole week we can pull from now and look at what's going on out there. This was a daily show back in the day, which was fun and exciting, but also a lot of effort. It's going to be weekly for now. We'll look into evolving things down the road. But again, a great week to kick off options out of these. Obviously, a truncated trading week, so you'd think it'd be a quiet one, a sleepy one. Not much to talk about, but nay, that is not the case. It's pretty much the exact opposite of the case out there these days. We got to start with this. You know, we're going to talk about some other fun trades that came across our radar and what you can do around them and all that kind of fun stuff. But <laughs> it doesn't get much more insane than the madness that has been going on out there in AMC this week. It's almost like this was tailor made. Like someone decided, oh, Options Oddities is coming back this week. Let's go nuts in AMC just to have something to talk about on that show. That's exactly what we've been seeing. If you've listened to the option block this week, you know that just yesterday, for example, was the first time maybe ever that something not only has beaten Apple in the top 10, that's happened before, but tripled it more than that. I think it ended up with 4 million contracts in AMC. That's not something we see very often. So we're talking about rarefied air here in the land of AMC, which, you know, and there's a couple of things that are interesting about this. First off, coming into today's show, you might think, man, it's insane. Call frenzy all the time. Got to get in on that juicy call action. And in the early part of this, you were correct. But then as the kind of AMC slash meme revolution 2.0 evolved, it got a little bit more, I can't say level headed because that's not the right word, but <laughs> got a little bit more, shall we say, egalitarian on both fronts because the calls were not as big as you might think. I mean, coming into actually startup today, before we get to today's action, the skew out there, the 30-day implied ball skew, is only at about the 33rd percentile. It's about a negative nine or so out there. So it wasn't this astronomically bid thing. That's because people were starting to wise up to this madness, and they were trading on both sides. It wasn't just the call frenzy anymore. I mean, yesterday, for example, they did about 2.3 million calls and about 1.7 million puts. So pretty much of that 4 million, nearly half of it was on the put side. So folks have been coming in using this opportunity to try to fade this as well. So it hasn't been just, there's a lot of call buying. And again, we'll get to that in a second, but not as much as perhaps you might think. Of course, fast forward to today and someone decided to just flip the script again. You can kind of see how the gears spin on these kind of things, because <laughs> coming into today, and again, we were just touching on this earlier on volatility views, but it merits further discussion and analysis here. AMC has been moving so quickly. They've been adding strikes just willy nilly. There was no 145 strike <laughs> expiring today a week ago. This is a new addition. You could see someone out there deciding, you know what? We need to get some hedging, upside exposure, call it what you will out there in AMC. Let's go. What is the highest strike they have available? Oh, it's the 145 strike. Let's get some of those because these things have been traded and trading in impressive numbers. In fact, coming into today's show, there was about 81,000 of these bad boys uh, on the tape, over 81,000 on the tape coming in today. Now, it wasn't just someone coming in and buying 80 plus thousand of these things. And that's why it, it behooves you to actually look at the flow and break it down a little bit here because it wasn't that by any means. Actually, a lot of this went up in chunks and blocks of around 500 or so, some more 700, a lot lower, 400 or so. We saw some bigger blocks around, uh, let's say, I think someone, some poor fool actually paid about 32 and a half cents for about 1,400 of these things. But most of these, most of these calls broke down in around the nickel to six cent range. That's where more than 20 plus percent of them did go up. But it is worth noting in the early sessions, there were some crazy prints. Again, it wasn't all you might have heard people saying they were paying 45 cents. That wasn't really the case. We saw about 14, 1500 of them total trading for about 33 cents. That was a good print. Probably the best print you got out there. We saw some smaller ones, 32 and a half. And so, and we saw about 2300 or so going up for about 30 cents. So unless you got in there really quick, you didn't get the Super juicy kind. But that said, if you add up all the flow that went up, let's say add a dime and above on these 145 calls, then you still got about 22% of that flow was north of a dime. So given the fact that this is a call that goes out today in a couple of hours, in an hour now, actually, and it's trading for anything more than a penny, you could see that as quite literally absurd. So <laughs> obviously someone was looking at their sheets and saying, you know what, we need to 
somehow wind up this risk. But what no makes sense, let's buy the uppermost strike available in AMC going out today. And they did. And it's been continuing to trade in these 500 to 700 to 400 blocks throughout most of the day. So if, if you were one of the fortunate few who saw these, maybe you had AMC stock already. This was a very juicy covered call opportunity, particularly obviously if you can get in at these 30 plus cent kind. I know only a few of you probably could. Also, verticals and things were kind of attractive out there if you wanted to put on a long leg. Anything that had a short leg on this strike that you could capture, anything north of a dime, anything north of a penny on these things was worth trading out here. So this one, again, this you could probably put a whole show just into this how much madness this was and i have the feeling this is not the end of the amc story out there by the way did you get your free bucket of popcorn if you're an amc stockholder hopefully you did maybe that makes up for missing out on these 30 cent calls out here but given what we've seen out here in amc i don't think this is the last time you're going to have the opportunity to jump on some juicy calls in fact i think we have some listener comments about that a little bit later, brand new show is already getting some listener fun. So that's always, always nice. But let's keep on the train rolling. Of course, yesterday, the big palooza was Ford. Ford calls were lighting it up, you know. I'll put it out to you guys. Is Ford a meme stock? And now it seems like it's kind of in that category, you know, was relatively low cost. It was lacking the heavily shorted component that most folks tend to use to kick off that meme stock conversation. But other than that, extremely bullish paper check. A lot of options, paper check, cheap stock price that is poised and easily able to be driven up a little bit, check and check. Uh, the float on Ford is a little bit higher than perhaps some of these other meme stocks that they're looking at as well. So it doesn't really check all of the boxes. But from a recent performance perspective, you could certainly say that was the case. We just talked about a week ago on the odd block, someone gobbling up the June 18 calls. We were talking about how insane that was. That seemed like a crazy bridge too far. I believe they were trading around 20 odd cents. And we said, you know what? We like Ford, but we probably would be sellers of those. And here we are getting a lot closer to that level. I mean, it still was a good sale out there on that covered call front. So if you had Ford, you had a good opportunity. You have a lot of good opportunities. People have been telling me for ages, oh, Ford is sleepy. Ford isn't really that juicy of a ball. At least just yesterday, we saw people gobbling up the 17 half calls in June. These are in the weeklies expiring on the 25th for 31 cents, nearly 13,000 times. That's a 62, almost 63 vol list. That's that's an impressive vol level for formerly sleepy Ford. We also saw more 17 halves going up a little bit later, another almost 13,000 for 27 cents. Those are about 60 and a half vol. And then we saw the 19s going up for on the same day, 25th for yeah, 27 cents through the offer. This was a 72 volatility there. So 18 strike really doesn't seem like that crazy anymore. People are loading up on 19s and above. So if you're one of these Ford folks who've been lamenting, man, there's not really any good opportunities for covered calls. They are handing them to you on a silver platter out here right now in Ford land. And again, unlike AMC, which had a lot more Equal paper, there was a lot of people trading the puts as well. Ford was predominantly calls, so we saw some nice juice popping in up there in Ford's. I got a feeling Ford's going to be making it back on our scans going forward here. It's kind of fun stuff. So, again, by the way, if you have names you guys are watching, you guys would like us to profile here on the return, the return of the new fun options oddities, especially as I dive into it next week with the Rock Lobster. Have at it. Hit us up. We'd love to... Uh, to break all this stuff down. Speaking of things we've been watching for a while, we've kind of been saving this one for the return of options oddities, even though I think Mr. Meatball let it out of the bag yesterday <laughs> on the option block. Going out to Vodafone as well, ticker symbol VOD. Not a name we talk about a lot that often. You know, you know, we talk about a lot of European telecom names. And it's not usually the most exciting of names. Up a little bit today, up about six tenths of a percent, nearly 18 and 1850 out there right now. But something we've been watching for a while out here is someone's been legging in and really just gobbling up the Oc 19s in Vodafone. This is a name that doesn't really do a lot of paper, listeners. It only does 1,693 contracts a day. So a few hundred, a few thousand contracts in Vodafone is a sizable position. That's several days worth of paper. We're talking well beyond that. We're talking uh, coming into today, 117,000 of these Oc 19 calls have been trading. They started trading a little while ago. They started trading about a couple of weeks ago, back on May 21st. was when the first really sizable block of about 47,000 
went up. That's when the stock was a little bit lower than it was pretty much where it opened today, about 1836, 1837 or so. So that's when they started putting these up. But they weren't done yet. Another 30-odd thousand uh, coming up a couple of days later, 17,000, 14,000, 8,000, 1,500. They've been printing these things almost every session ever since. And the OI has pretty much opened every time. So that OI is up to about 117,000 now. So you have a name that does Less than 2,000 contracts a day and someone coming in putting on 117,000 of the OC 19s. This is weird for a number of reasons. Uh, first off, it's not that outlandish of a strike. And it wasn't when they started putting it on. It was only not even 60-odd cents away, really, from where the underlying was at the time. Usually when we see this kind of paper, particularly when we do the odd block or when we used to do this show, you know, it would be a little bit more shall we say, optimistic. They'd be structuring something of bigger pop, maybe a little bit closer to home and a bigger pop. Instead, this is a reasonable time frame of October, so that's a long time from now, and a fairly reasonable level out here in these, in, the, in terms of price out here in these OC calls. So these were, these are going to, obviously they were paying some pretty, pretty rich levels. They, when they started trading, they're around 74 cents. They've kind of obviously only gone up since then, trading around the 80-odd cent level now. So these are, not that cheap, so he has to run up to about obviously close to almost 19 for these bad boys to really work out for him. But he's got time. He's got time. Another problem, though, when we start looking at names like this, because you might say, okay, this is a great one to maybe start looking at some sort of piggybacking trading against this. I never like jumping on to the trade that someone else is doing. That's usually a recipe for disaster, particularly after 117, 1,000 have flocked into a strike and paper has bit up this strike to astronomical levels. You don't want to be the 117,000 and first contract to come in and buy that. No, you want to do something else that could take advantage of the distortion that they've created. The problem with Vodafone, again, it's kind of a sleepy name. So there aren't a ton of strikes to come in and really start playing with. So you could look at some, if you like a fly, you know, you could look at something like the OC 18, 19, 20. So you're going to coming in and selling two of those. The problem is, again, there aren't many strikes. So the strikes around <laughs> that uh, 19 strike are also going to, it's not like they're cheap. They're going to be bid up as well. So you're taking advantage of that distortion, but it isn't as exciting. Perhaps you can get that off for probably around a nickel, maybe maybe seven cents debit exciting. There we go. That's not that exciting out there. If you play around a little bit differently, some folks are looking at maybe doing uh, you know a two lot where you're coming in, uh, you're selling the OC 19, selling the OC 16 put if you like downside here in this, and then coming in maybe buy some upside. If you think this guy's right, do the OC 20s for two. You get your long units at the end of that using the 19s and the 16 puts to finance that. So if you think this guy is right, then you can do that for a little bit more, about 35 cents. Actually, you can do that for a credit, 35 cent credit out there. So that might be an interesting way to go if you don't mind having that downside leg in Vodafone. I like that a little bit better, I think, than just that fly because that fly isn't exciting me at about, oh, a nickel to a dime debit out there again the problem with the dearth of strikes this was a more active name where you could play around a, a little bit more out here of course if you get those strikes a little bit different if you go out to maybe like the 1921 and do the two of the 21s and sell the 19 sell the 16 put you can do it even a little better 51 cent credit so there's ways you can play with that again this is a weird one for a lot of reasons the size but it doesn't create as actionable a, a distortion as you can in some of these other ones that we've been looking at. But we're going to keep an eye on this one as this keeps trading. Maybe more of these will keep piling in and maybe we'll be able to get some, maybe get some more strikes. <laughs> that would be kind of nice. Then we can kind of play around a little bit, a little bit more. But this one's one to watch, especially we are talking just size positions that create distortions out here. This is an interesting one. If you are a Vodafone holder right now, I mean, it's a kind of a tight strike, so it's not that attractive from a covered call perspective as well. But this guy is bidding up these calls. So if you don't think there's a lot of upside between now and October, you can take advantage of these trading at pretty impressive vol levels and pretty impressive premium levels. Take advantage of that if you are indeed a Vodafone holder out here. Let's look at some of these smaller names as well. These come across our radar a lot as well. We don't get a chance to break these down on other shows, but often that's where some of the more interesting stuff of the week can be found. Here's a name we don't really talk about really ever <laughs> out here on the odd block or anything else. Is Yext. Yext Inc. Ticker symbol appropriately enough. Yext. Y-E-X-T. This is a New York City technology company operating in the area of online brand management. That tells you nothing. <laughs> they say they use their cloud-based network of apps, search engines, and other facilities to offer brand updates. So that sounds about as 
as Web 2.0 as you can get <laughs> out there. Uh, but interesting, looks like someone is pretty optimistic on good old yaks. This is kind of more some of the old, old school odd block paper we used to see. Someone kind of swinging for the fences. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering, this is a name that does about 2,300 contracts, actually more than some of the other names like Vodafone we were just talking about. So they actually do a little bit more paper than you might think. The stock's a little bit cheaper, 1408 right now, off about a couple of cents on the day. But the print we saw going up, this was yesterday. Yeah, this went up yesterday, which was kind of interesting to us, was the Jan 25. So that's optimistic, 11 points out of the money. Jan 25 is going up 5,000 times. Someone actually paid 40 cents for those bad boys right near the offer. Again, 5,000 times. If you're wondering, it's about a 56 volatility. So that's pretty rich for a name like Yex, gobbling up calls that are, oh, whopping 76% <laughs> out of the money. This is not a name, again, we follow quite a bit. So I'm looking at the one-year trajectory. This one has had, it's had some moments. It's gotten up to not quite 25, but it got to 20 back on September 1st of last year. And then it gapped up, looks like, to about 19 and a half, almost 20 bucks again in February of this year. And the 52-week high is actually almost 21, 2090. So this, this chart looks almost like a bit of a biotech. This has had a number of peaks and valleys and very aggressive therein. I'm guessing not a lot of float here for Yex. So someone coming out and dropping 200 grand. On a decent size flyer, pretty much more than two times, probably two and a half times uh, the ADV on this name. This is one that I think is worth paying attention to, especially because this is now the number two open position in Yext behind the much more reasonable June 15 calls. Those are only about a buck out of the money. Those have 8,300 contracts. But these Jan 25s right behind it out here, which is kind of fascinating. Again, looking at some interesting ways you can kind of piggyback on these kind of things and trade against them if you if you are so inclined. Again, I think fly, something like this, may be an attractive way to go because you want to take advantage. Again, they're creating a distortion around that strike. The benefit of Yext, you got a few more strikes here uh, to play with, which is kind of nice. Not a ton, but you get some two half strikes. So that does make it a little bit more nuanced. You can come out and if you want to just uh, keep things Nice and close to even. You can do like a 15, 25, 30 fly. That one doesn't excite me because they got a pretty sizable debit on that, about a buck and a half. I would, that's well beyond what I would want to be comfortable spending on something like a flyer on Yext. And then, of course, you got the 17 half, 25 fly. So, again, you're selling two of those 25s. That's about 60-odd cents. That's still a pretty sizable debit. Things get a little cheaper if you get a little bit higher up. So if you are inclined, about 25 cents for these 20, 25 uh, fly. But then, again, you're not getting that far away at that point from what the guy paid here for the calls. I definitely, if you're going to do that butterfly we were talking about earlier, the Jan 15, 25, 30, that's a buck 40. I'd much, much rather come in and just do the vertical 15, 25, not mess around with any of that other stuff. Either way, you're looking a lot better from a probability perspective than this guy who's loading up on the 25 strike in Yext. But this is another one. We're going to put this in our category here of for options oddities of trades we want to keep an eye on trades we maybe might want to trade around a little bit here uh, that are just interesting and again not on the radar of everybody out there so that makes them a little bit more fun a little bit more exciting of course if you are a yext holder if you're if you're a yext fan you got the stock you could you could easily sell those for 40 cents get a nice three percent through january if the stock sits right here uh, you probably actually stocks drop now, so it's more than 3%. But still, it's an interesting one to watch here. So again, creating some covered call opportunities out there as well. And everyone's favorite name, Yext. <laughs> again, these are these are kind of the names that we like to keep an eye on. Again, the smaller blocks, sometimes is where we can, you can find the more interesting nuggets. Keeping that train alive here yesterday as well. Another interesting day yesterday. We saw a lot of single name action out there. Yext yesterday going up here. And another name, good thing Uncle Mike isn't here. He'd be all over this one. It's Dollar Tree. He loves the Dollar Tree segment. We saw some interesting action out there as well. Dollar Tree right now is about almost 102, up about one and a third points out there. So up a little bit, about 1.3% out there. So it's trading right around 100 bucks uh, earlier this morning. Someone yesterday coming in, and this is, again, kind of more old school, uh, kind of what you used to see in the odd block type of paper. Uh, the July 120s going up. For 20 cents, folks pretty much lifting the offer close to it out there as well. Nearly 5,000 times. That's about a 30 vol, which is actually pretty aggressive for a name like Dollar Tree. Not exactly known to be 
shall we say, the most action-packed of names, even though over the course of the past year it has had a low of about 84 and a high of about 120. It's a 40-point range out there for a Dollar Tree name. And it's had a few big moments here. It looks like in November of last year around earnings, it gapped up from about 94 all the way up to 111. And so it's had a few other moves like that. That was the biggest of the year, though, and it peaked out, topped out right around 120 and change. It looks like someone may be wagering that Dollar Tree can get back there. It's got to do it pretty quick. These are July. <laughs> so he's took a the ADV again. And this one is only 7,200 contracts. This guy putting up about 5,000. That's pretty much a day's worth of paper for Dollar Tree just in this name. That's about 100 grand. This guy's throwing down on the table for Dollar Tree. Needs to have an aggressive move. You know, you're always saying you're buying a premium. You need something to happen fast. So this guy needs this to happen fast because these calls are going to go the way of the dodo. <laughs> Unlike some of the other ones, though, again, with a little bit more strike action out here, it does offer some opportunities. I was looking at this. Actually, this is one of the ones I was trying to work before the show, see if I can get it on. I'll have to go see if I was filled. But that fly, that fly out, if you were intrigued by this kind of thing, you want to do something as a little bit a little bit better in terms of probability. There were some flies out there you can take advantage of. Anything selling the 120 strike, including the 115, 120, 125, for a while there was lining up for even money. You can get that for even money. So you're paying commissions effectively on that. So we were working some of those. I'll have to see if we got filled on those. We have to move them up to a whopping nickel. But if you wanted something that was a little bit, you wanted to piggyback on this, but it was something that was not quite thrown away 20 cents out there. You want to just pay commissions, then something like that might be interesting. Again, these days when things are moving around so crazy and swinging around, I got some of these off in AMC earlier as well. Things will line up sometimes. It may behoove you to put on some of these bids on trades that otherwise you couldn't get, like something like a butterfly, for example. You normally shouldn't be able to trade it for even money or for very, very small, small debits. But that is the case a lot of times. I was getting things for even money in AMC or maybe you know a nickel debit here or there for things that were extremely wide flies that had a decent chance of actually working out. So when things get hot and heavy, as long as you keep your trades risk mitigated with a butterfly, you know exactly what you're getting into and how much you could make and how much it could cost you because that's what you're paying. If you're not just blasting away, at, let's say puts or whatever the case may be naked, uh, you're actually out there doing some sort of risk mitigated trades. It could behoove you to put these spreads up. The worst that could happen is you don't get filled. Your broker's not going to cancel your account because you're putting in some outlandishly aggressive bid <laughs> for some butterfly out here. Let's say a name like Dollar Tree or maybe in a more active name like AMC. So this is an opportunity. I'll let you know if we get filled on this and we'll we'll put it in our in our to be watched category out here. This is kind of a fun one. Anytime they give you a chance to play along but also fade the distortion a little bit and do it for no money you kind of have to take that all right let's see going back out now to wednesday let's look at a couple more here interesting stuff a few things i wanted to break down first off there was a pretty aggressive sweep in mattel and i kind of wanted to just talk about these for a second there's a lot of different ways that options orders go up and Mattel, of course, ticker symbol MAT, M-A-T, trading right now, about $20.70 off about almost 20 cents or about almost a percent on the day. Yesterday, we saw someone coming in gobbling up 5,148 of the 21 calls, and they were trading them at a variety of prices. And you might see that and say, oh, they bought about 5,000 for 45 cents. But how these go up is also interesting because it wasn't just 5,148. If you break it down a little bit, you'll see they got a two lot on the Amex for 45 cents. And then they got 33 of these on Gemini for 45 cents. So you can go through the whole list. There's quite a few of them here. Three more on Box, 248 on, on Box, and then 100 on Nom, and then uh, two more on Nom. And all the way up, they paid some for 50, looks like, too. And then they got uh, the, the rest, 3,271 on the SIBO for 55 cents. A total of 59 trades on 15 exchanges. Took about a third of a second. So there's a lot more going on sometimes when you see these prints going up than it might meet the eye if you just see someone putting a print out there. Oh, someone gobbled up 5,000. No, they actually swept these across all the exchanges. They took all of the calls that were offered at 45. And obviously it wasn't enough because they got everything at 45. Then they went up to 50 and then they traded the balance 3271 at 55 cents. So they came across all the exchanges and they said, pretty much where are these June 21s is expiring on the 11th. So next week in Mattel, and they said, okay, we'll take them. How are they now? We'll take those. How are they now? We'll take them again. That was all done electronically and automatically and done in a third of a second. That gives you a sense of how 
how some of these orders go up and how quickly this stuff can go up. Let's go out here. June 21s. These are kind of at the monies now. So not as uh, optimistic from a strike perspective, but certainly from an execution perspective. It's kind of worth noting. That's someone who really had to get these things <laughs> out here. Open interest on the strike, by the way, was only seven. So this is a lot of opening paper here. Let's look really quickly at Mattel. Obviously an interesting space a year ago. Nader, right in around, you know, the heart of the pandemic, maybe not a lot of people buying toys. Uh, so they were trading about 10 bucks, and they've kind of been on a nice slow upward trajectory ever since October. They were trading about 13, and then by January, they were trading 18, almost 19. They topped out, looks like, at about 23 and change not too long ago. It was like in May, and now they're kind of coming off that a little bit again. So it's like someone thinking the upside party at least the at the money party can continue for and just for the next week too. This is a very short term trade, so uh, this is one that's kind of worth it. Also, forty five cents to fifty five cents. That's pretty aggressive. They really gobbled these up. These are in their face <laughs> right now already. We're heading into the weekend. Uh, they're probably regretting maybe that last chunk at fifty five cents. But this one looks like poised for a very near term pop. These are obviously a very high gamma contract, a weekly call option. This is one we're going to come back on next week and see how they perform. Maybe they got out of them. Maybe they're trying to hedge. doesn't look like they did these with stock. So this was a straight up sweeping aggressive call by here in Mattel. Again, something you can take advantage of if you are a Mattel holder. You come around, do nice near-term covered calls. Coming really quickly too, one of the other trends we've seen that has worked out very well over the course of the past year and change in our odd block show, we can expand upon it here on options oddities, are what my... Typical compatriot, the Rock Lobster likes to call the line in the sand puts. We saw something similar going up this past week on Wednesday. Good old pump. This is Pro Petro Holding. The stock at the time, let's see, was... Where was the stock here? Well, we'll get to that in a second. I'll pull that up. But we saw 10,000 lot, 10,000 even of the Jan 2022 $10 puts. Now these were, let's see, they were buck seventy at a buck ninety five, pretty rich. But again, you're going all the way out to Jan out here. By the way, it's nearly a seventy volatility. So, I mean, all the energy space has been pretty volatile of late. But this name, let's see if it merits it. Let's go out a year ago. It was trading five eighty six, and they were pretty much they got lower. They got down to three fifty eight in November. Obviously, crude is weighing on them then, and they kind of just turned right around by March eighth of this year. They were trading almost fourteen bucks, thirteen ninety nine, and they've kind of given up the ghost. Seems like ever since got down to about nine eighty five. Actually, just a couple of weeks ago, it's like they've rebounded recently from nine eighty five up to about eleven thirty five, where they're trading today. Uh, so a good a good run, <laughs> a good run for them up about six cents again today, about half a percent. So they had a good couple of weeks out here in pump. Sounds like someone's deciding to draw that line in the sand at the 10 strike. They got a pretty rich buck 70 for these two, a buck 70 on these on the Philly. So you're talking not quite two bucks, but pretty darn close to it here on a name that's a that's a eleven dollar and thirty five cent name going out there so you're talking about 15 percent from when they put this up if they hold this trade through expiration in january and obviously if the worst comes to pass they are picking the stock up at a much much lower level you're talking 830 out there so that's attractive as well so we like to look at these kind of juicy line in the sands normally we like to go out that far because we like to maximize your theta but sometimes in a less liquid name like this, you kind of have to go out a little bit farther to get a little bit more your juice that's worth the squeeze out here. So pump, an interesting one, not one that we watch too often, but this is going to be one of our longer term line in the sand here as well. And these, if past is prologue, have worked out pretty well. Now, obviously, we're in a longer term bull market, so selling all the money put premium should be a favorable trade. So uh, something to watch on this one. Do you like this one? Do you want to piggyback? Does this one you want to fade aggressively? You think this is a terrible trade? Hit us up. Let us know out here. Again, this is just through Wednesday. It's a lot of paper going up out here these days. Hey, let's look really quickly. Uh, let's go one more here before we get some of you already hitting us up on this, which I love. Let's go out to another name we haven't talked about in forever. Kodak. I mean, what the hell do they even do now, right? <laughs> they were Kodak. They went the way of the dodo very infamously, kind of came back with that infamous pivot into crypto. And then, of course, that even more infamous, pretty much everyone on their board getting in on the insider trading frenzy. And the SEC said, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> and so they kind of got their hands slapped on that. And then now, who knows what the hell Kodak is 
anymore, but they have been moving eight and a quarter right now, up about 20 cents or nearly about 2.3% out here. Also on Wednesday, we saw someone looks like taking that same, same style, that same trade, the line in the sand put, doing it a little bit closer to home, though. This is going up, looks like about 4,000 times here for Kodak 39.94 to be precise of the June Make it back. These are expiring today. These are the June 4th. So they went up yesterday and they got 18 cents for these eight puts expiring today. Again, we're at eight and a quarter. So it isn't that far out of the money. But that's, uh, you know, let's see. That's a 151 volatility. So that's a pretty decent level. The stock was at about eight and a half. So the stock was higher when they sold these actually too. So the stock has sold off on these puts. It might be a little bit juicier now. No earnings in this earnings are coming up in august so this was a straight up just aggressive put sale of about four thousand i'm gonna go out on a limb and say these bad boys probably worked out because this guy got an impressive 151 volatility this will be fun we could do a daily show we can highlight these kind of as soon as we see these and maybe we'll put these out in like little alerts on the website for all the people who do them the member they can log in on the member site and we'll say hey look at these interesting perhaps juicy puts here in kodak of course kodak risky company you don't know they could have another big crazy swing <laughs> out there like they did before so maybe that 151 percent move is warranted let's go back of the year really quickly and look at kodak here obviously it's a pretty infamous year all the way through till it was coming up on like about a year ago where we saw that big pop because it was two dollars 62 cents on july 27th and then the next day it was eight bucks and then the next day after that, it was $33.20. <laughs> One of the more infamous kind of just insane pump and dumps we've ever seen out here. And the people who were dumping were the corporate executives, which is a big no-no. Then the next day, it was trading 14 again and then got down to about 9 bucks again by August 13th. And by the 28th, it was back down to about 6 bucks, And kind of all the madness was behind them except for the legal wrangling out here. But still contributes to some interesting and juicy volatility here. In these eight puts going out today, I thought they were a little bit longer term when we first profiled them, but they're going out today. So that's someone harvesting a little bit of the old risk premium and getting a fair amount of money to boot out there, as the Canadians like to say, talking about 72 grand for a couple of days worth of action out here. Not exactly the worst trade we've seen. Again, this is kind of just a kickoff here. What we're going to talk about here on Options Audi is a lot more stuff to come. Also, we're looking at playing around, adding some new wrinkles to the game, including we talk a lot about futures options here on the show, trying to get some more of those scans and insight. And For example, we talk about a lot of crazy upside one by twos and ratios and verticals and products like gold and crude oil, trying to get those maybe on the Options Oddities coming down the road for you guys as well. A little bit of a challenge, not quite as granular in the futures option space. It's kind of hard to narrow down the exact execution of what was going on in the futures option space. We're going to try to work that out for you so we can get that featured here on the program down the road as well. A lot of cool wrinkles we have planned for this. So if you guys have thoughts, what you'd like to see, hit us up just like <laughs> some of our listeners did. Again, the new show, we already have listener question, which which I love. First off, Victor, or maybe Wichter. <laughs> Wichter in America. I think he's European, though, in which case the W is a V. So Victor, I think he's German. Let's go with Victor. I just like it. Victor wants to know. I love your shows. <laughs> Five stars. Well, thank you. I listened to all the episodes and the knowledge I've gained. Thanks to you has made me a profitable trader. This has transformed my life. Exclamation. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Victor. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. You're not one of these folks out there just spending all your money on AMC 145 calls expiring today. If you are, then stop what you're doing and maybe listen to some of these shows. All right. So I was looking at live options flow today. This came in actually a little bit ago and noticed a trade I did not understand. So I was hoping you can demystify it for me. Well, that's what this show is all about here, Victor. He says, on May 14th, in the last hour of trading, someone has sold. I think that's why I think English is second language. But he does a good job with it. English, someone has sold the May 14th, 343 Amazon put spreads. He says, in parentheses, bought the 3220 puts, sold the 3260 puts, collecting 1.2 million in premiums. I love how the Europeans say that. At that time, the price of Amazon was between 3216 and 3228 approximately. Uh, he says here, Amazon closed at 3222.90 on that day, which means that the trader likely got assigned 34,000 shares of the company, value over 110 million. Uh, they seem like they have lost approximately one and a quarter million on that trade 
which more than cancels out the premium they received. They received. This trade baffles me. Was the trader expecting the stock to end closer to 3260 and keep the premium? Can you explain to me whether this was a quote stock entry mechanism or rather a fat fingered order entry? Thank you and keep up the good work. Uh, well, we did look up what you were talking about here, Victor, and it's a little bit different than how you you broke it down, but not not too different. It was you were right on the strikes. It was the 3220. 3260 uh, May put spread expiring on the 14th. It went up 200 times here for, uh, let's see, yeah, for 35 bucks. So paper looks like they they sold here. Where are the prices here? Yeah, they sold that spread for $35 even pretty much when the stock was 32.20 and a half. So it's a $40 put spread. He sold it for $35, so you know right away your risk there is 5 bucks. Right? It can only be worth $40. So that alone uh, will help your analysis, I think, a little bit. And then, as he mentioned, I didn't check where the stock closed. I'm going to assume your number is correct here, Victor. If the stock closed at 32, what did you say, 32, 22.90 out there, then that spread went out, obviously, at a little bit different price, went out about 37.10. When I say spread, it's really the 32.60 put. The 32.20 put is worthless now. It expired out of the money. So that 32.60 put that he sold for 35 bucks went out at 32, 37.10, excuse me. So he did it 200 times. Uh, so he lost $2.10 200 times. So about 42 grand. Not quite the apocalyptic <laughs> thing that you profiled. Now, there's a couple of caveats to this, though. You're right. He did sell an in-the-money put, so he took the stock unless he closed it out, which I didn't see any closing side to this. So luckily for him, we always say close these things out before expiration. If he did not, if he did take delivery on the stock, that stock the next Monday morning <laughs> looked a little bit better. It gapped up to 3270, which is still pretty much the near-term high for Amazon. It hasn't got back to that level Pretty much since. So that next Monday morning, he made about 45 bucks on the stock he had, which was about 20,000 shares. So he made close to a million bucks, about 900,000, if indeed, if he held the stock. Now, knowing exactly what he did with the stock when he closed it out, he closed out on Friday. There's so much Amazon stock. on it; It's impossible to really determine that. But the put spread alone wasn't as bad as you thought. Only about 42 grand out there. Remember, it's a $40 put spread. He sold it for 35 and went out at 37.10. There wasn't much beyond that. If you look at the stock angle, it could have been bad, but it actually worked out pretty well for him. Got nearly 50 bucks on it. So if he had the stock, it looked even better. So he lost 42 grand, but then made almost a million the next session. So it could have worked out pretty well in his favor. So there you go. Some people sometimes get confused with how the puts and how all these things work together. I get it. It is confusing, especially if you're looking at these markets from overseas and you're not used to maybe how these things work here. But think of it that way. It's a it's a spread. It's a risk mitigated proposition to begin with. It's a forty dollar spread. You're selling it for thirty five bucks. The worst that could happen is it goes to forty dollars. Right now, the stock leg gets a little bit different, but uh, beyond that, it's not quite the one and a quarter million palooza that uh, that you were thinking here. All right, let's go on out now. Another one. This came in live. A little bit ago from my boy Luigi here, he says, AMC drama. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that, Luigi, going around. He says, so I own AMC stock. Oh, well, good for you. I guess if I ever meet you in person, dinner will be on you at Gibson, sir. He says, just minding my own business. <laughs> I don't know if you can't be minding your own business with AMC stock right now. It's moving so much. He says, I started with just a simple covered call. Uh, the implied vol was 100 plus. Then it took off. So I rolled up and out again, and the IB was over 250 by then. Yeah, I saw it was well over 300 uh, recently. Uh, the next day, it rolled up and out again. IB over 350 then, uh, sitting on 79 days. Wow, you're going pretty far out with these calls, Luigi. I'm in at $14 on the latest call juice, and the latest call juice is $32.64. So you're in at the stock from 14 and you got $32 on the covered call. Yeah, I think... I think you should probably be happy on that. You're going out 79 days, though. Why are you going out so far? We were just talking about this on Options Bootcamp. I mean, people wrote in, oh, my, I went through my covered call. Should I roll? 
one way to make your life easy with the rolling is not going out two, three months on the covered call. You want to maximize the decay, especially in a name like AMC. It's shooting all over the place. Uh, you want to have those kind of ones that are going out pretty quickly, and especially on the covered call side. And it also gives you a chance to readjust, right? If you're if you sold the end of this week, your call goes away. You can reestablish it next week at whatever crazy level AMC is now. If you sell it three months from now, then yeah, you're stuck. You're rolling like crazy. That'd be my first change for you and for anyone else out there who's trying to play this crazy meme game. And you have the stock. First off, the decay is much better. You're going to see that nice juicy theta. That meat's going to come off the bone a lot faster if you're playing in the weeklies and 79 days to go. And then B, it eliminates a lot of these problems of, oh, when do I roll? Because your your strike will take care of it. It goes away and you get to set it again the next week. You get to do it all over again. Uh, So definitely, definitely, if you're playing in these Keep it. You don't want to be stuck in a position for three months in freaking AMC. Who knows what the hell's going on? So now you're left twiddling your thumbs. You're right. Good. That's going to take a while for that thirty-two dollars to come your way. I think you're. He says, "How am I looking?" He said, "You're looking pretty good." I. But I would definitely make that adjustment going forward. He says, "What are my thoughts?" I also added a call butterfly. I paid seventy-five cents for a ten-dollar spread centered around forty-five. Uh, the call above it is seventy-nine days. Again, what's the long term? If you're buying butterflies. 79 days out. That's the same problem. It's it's going to take a long time for that spread to widen out, right? And get where you want it to, even if it moves in the direction you want. If it's three months to go, it's not going to perform the way you want. What's the delta on that fly, right? Very small. So <laughs> it's going to take a long time for that decay to come out, the spread to widen out, and you to get whatever your max payout is on that fly. Even if AMC cooperates with you and sits at your max profit strike for the entire time, the entire duration of that trade over there so yeah i I think you're looking good i mean you can't argue with a winner (laughs) you bought the stock for 14 and you sold the call (laughs) for 30 32 33 bucks you can't be mad at that you're already winning but yeah definitely anyone who's listening to this definitely play a lot closer to the vest especially in these crazy meme things you don't want to be hanging out here Forever. You know, we're talking about some of these weird names that are out to January. Those are a little bit less liquid. You kind of have to go that far for some of these line in the sand put things like, let's say, some of these names like, you know, plug and some of these other ones we were talking about. Again, pump. Not exactly the most liquid names out here, but crazy things like AMC. Yeah, you want to be uh, want to be a little bit more nimble on those bad boys. So keep those questions coming. We love to hear from all of you folks, even for these new shows. We love all of you guys and gals out there chiming in. All right, that's going to do it for this kickoff. Kind of a a sneak peek, a taste, if you will, of what's to come here on Options Oddities going forward. Remember, a lot of fun stuff in store for all of our pro folks and our plus folks out there. Going to have the Rock Lobster joining me this time next week to break down some great Options Oddities fun. Our pro Q&A is all lined up already for Tuesday. Going to have the Flow Master himself. Mr. Schwartz joining me here. There's a reason why he's the go-to guy for the entire industry and they want to know what's going on in the world of options. He's the guy the pros talk to. There's a reason why I call him the flow master. Well, guess what? He's answering your questions on Tuesday for all of our pro friends out there. So if you haven't joined the party yet, get in there. It's super fun. And again, it's just beginning over there. So theoptionsinsider.com slash plus or slash pro will get you there. You can go to slash shop as well. That'll get you to the combo of both. So a lot of fun stuff in store for everyone. A lot of new wrinkles up their stocks you want us to add to this analysis coming up in future weeks. Maybe you like the idea of the commodity stuff. Maybe you like this crazy stuff. We can do meme stuff. All kinds of fun stuff we can do with a show like this going forward. It's like the market is just handing us all sorts of fun to discuss. It's a perfect time to have options oddities. So if you're intrigued by this, you want to talk some weird options activity, Join us over there on the pro journey. It should be a fun one. And, of course, that concludes our broadcast week here on the network. I want to thank all of you out there for joining us, not just for the pro Q&A and this, but for everything throughout the week, option block, options boot camp, options playbook radio, ball views, TWIFO, advisors option, everything else we have kicking off there this week. Glad to see so many of you are enjoying it. See you back here on Monday for the option block and then all the way through to another Friday, another episode of Options Oddities. Have a great weekend, everybody.
You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.